Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about CISA questions part 2, 2024 questions bank. In this video, we're going to discuss about testing types and we're also going to discuss about the RT and MTD questions. I'm already CISA certified with 17 plus years of experience and thanks for sharing your love on the first part of the video. And uh, if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. If you have not did that because you might miss some important information in the future. And for more information, do contact my, uh, you can check my LinkedIn profile. And um, this is all from my side. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. So the first coffee shot, an auditor is assessing the reliability of audit evidence gathered during the course of IT audit. Auditor consider various factors that could influence the trustworthiness of information received. Which of the following is the key determined for evaluating the reliability of the audit evidence? See one thing always remember from a CISA perspective, always remember, if you obtain the information directly from the source, then that only considered as a trusted evidence. If as an auditor, I am obtaining a log directly from a system, it is considered as a trusted evidence. So they say that, okay, which of the following is a key parameter? Option A, scalability of IT system from which evidence was obtained, as it reflect the capability of handling increase the workload without compromising a performance, which is not true. Because the scope of the question, they say various factor, but which are the key factor to determine the trustworthiness of the information. Option B, independence of the provider of the evidence as it impact the impartiality and unbiased nature of the information provided makes sense. Option C, complexity of the organization network infrastructure as may it affect the difficulty securing the monitoring asset, which does not make sense with the question. And option D is qualification of the individual providing a information evidence emphasis the need for expertise and competence in delivering the reliable data. So I am eliminating A and I am eliminating the C. Now B and D look same. See, there is a possibility we have a great expert, but he will under some pressure, he can provide some wrong information or he will try to support. The most important thing when we're talking about the source or validating the evidence is the independence of the provider who providing me the data. And that is the reason answer is B. A good auditor is the one which is independent. The good evidence is the one which is coming from trusted source and there is an independence in their perspective. And that is the reason answer is basically B for beta. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. Now question basically say here is, the auditor is planning to conduct audit of an organization newly implemented IT system to ensure compliance with the internal policy and external regulation. To effectively assess the system, auditor intends to design and select the audit sample, perform audit procedure and evaluate the sample results. The primary objective of this activity is to, now read the question carefully, it says auditor is planning to conduct audit of an organization newly implemented IT system to ensure compliance with the policy and external regulation. To effectively assess the system, the keyword is basically to effectively assess the system auditor intends to design and select the audit sample. So they want to design an audit sample, perform the audit procedure and evaluate the sample. The primary objective of this activity is to option A, identify the potential area of non-compliance within the IT system by testing a subset of transactions that may not represent the entire population. Now here the keyword is effectively assess system, auditor intend to design and select the audit sample, perform audit procedure and evaluate the sample results. Okay, option B, obtain the sufficient and appropriate evidence to form a conclusion about the compliance and effectiveness of IT system based on audit sample and procedure perform, makes sense. Option C, estimate the total amount of error in the IT system by extrapolating result from the audit sample when modifying and thereby providing a quantitative measure of system compliance. And option D is generate a compliance list of potential risk associated with the IT system as identified through the audit sample of subsequent testing procedure. Now three things are there. They want to assess the system and they want some kind of an assurance. So identify potential of area non-compliance, but what about the further compliance area? We don't need to miss that. So A, eliminate. If you go by C, just estimating total amount of error, you cannot able to take a call. So C, eliminate. So we left with B and D. D say generate a list of risks, but based on risk, we cannot take a call. 
So answer is basically B for beta. Obtain the sufficient appropriate evidence to form a conclusion about compliance and effectiveness IT system based on the audit sample and procedure has been performed. That's the reason answer is B. Whenever you're not clear with the current sample, we can extend. That is always a first rule in CISA. When you're not clear with something, you can extend your results so you get a better visibility. And here also they want to ensure the compliance with policy. So they're looking to assess the system from which perspective. So they're directly obtaining the evidence from a conclusion so that, that that's something they can look for that's the reason answer is b for beta let's move to the next coffee shot thank you interesting question auditor is planning the audit of an organization financial reporting system okay audit aim to ensure the audit aim to ensure the system is accurately reports a financial data in a compliance with the regulatory requirement auditor plan to include compliance testing or a test of control in the audit scope okay so primary purpose of conducting compliance testing or test of control in the context two option a determine the adequacy of internal control design without assessing whether they are determined uh, they, they are implemented or effectively implemented or operated by the organization see this option describe the objective of design effectiveness assessment rather than compliance testing because compliance testing goes beyond evaluating a design of control to assess whether controls are operating effectively in practice and designing assessment is a preliminary steps while the compliance testing involved verifying the operational effectiveness so a is eliminate if you see b evaluating the operating effectiveness of a control in preventing detecting correcting material weakness and ensure the financial reporting is both accurate and compliant with the regulation which makes sense let let's keep this b as an option because we're talking about the complete statement now, third statement is say assess the uh, what you called uh, assess the overall risk of organization financial reporting process to identify the area of potential non-compliance with external financial reporting standard. See this option relate more to the risk assessment phase of an audit, which is used to plan and plan the audit and determine the nature, timing, and extent of audit procedure. While assessing the risk is crucial, compliance testing especially involved evaluating the effectiveness of a control in operation, not just identifying the risk. So that's the reason I am eliminating C. D say verify the accuracy and completeness of financial data reported by the system through the substantive testing or transaction sample and balance. See, this describes the substantive testing, not a compliance testing. Because substantive testing aim to directly verify the accuracy and completeness of financial information. In contrast, compliance testing assesses the effectiveness of the control that might impact the financial reporting. And that is the reason I'm going with the answer B. B for beta. Evaluate the operating effectiveness of a control in preventing or detecting or correcting material weakness ensure that financial reporting is both accurate and compliant with the regulation okay because whenever we conduct audit we start with the compliance testing first we look for the absence and presence of control and then existing control effectiveness further from the accuracy perspective we will validate with the help of uh, this one what is called as a substantive testing always remember okay i repeat again first we basically start with the uh, you can say compliance testing where we're just checking the absence and presence of control. And then the outcome of compliance testing is to used to plan for a substantive test. If the outcome of compliance testing indicate the existence of effective internal control, then substantive testing may, may not required or may reduce. However, if the outcome of compliance testing indicate the poor internal control system, then more rigorous substance test is basically required. So design of substance steps is often depend on the result of the compliance test actually. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Thank you. Okay, so during the audit of company financial statement, auditor decide to implement substantive testing, okay, or test of detail. The primary reason of conducting a substantive testing in this scenario is to option A, evaluate the design and implementation of internal control to determine if they are adequate to prevent or detect correct material misstatement in the financial statement. So this describe objective of control testing, not a substantive testing, okay. Let me explain you what is that. See, when I'm auditing the change management procedure and we are looking for the appropriate documentation, that is basically called as a compliance testing. But compare the result of change result with the stored result, that is part of a substantive testing. Okay. So question option A is more about compliance. Option B is say that gain a understanding of organization internal control environment to assess the risk of material misstatement and plan the nature, timing, and extent of further audit procedure. See, this option describes the preliminary assessment of phase of audit, where auditor gain an understanding of the internal control environment. 
ऑप्शन सी डिटेक्ट मटीरियल मिस स्टेटमेंट एट द एसेशन लेवल बाई डायरेक्टली टेस्टिंग फाइनेंशियल एंड ट्रांजेक्शन बैलेंस एंड डिस्कलोजर विदाउट रिलाइंग ऑन द इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ इंटरनल कंट्रोल विच मेक सेंस एंड डी से इवेल्युएट द ऑपरेटिंग इफेक्टिवस ऑफ अ कंट्रोल इन प्रिवेंटिंग डिटेक्टिंग करेक्टिंग मटीरियल वीकनेस इन शोर फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिंग इज बोथ एक्यूरेट एंड कंप्लाइंट विद द रेगुलेशन सो दिस सिमिलर टू द ऑप्शन ए दिस डिस्क्राइब द ऑब्जेक्टिव टेस्टिंग द इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ इंटरनल कंट्रोल नॉट द डायरेक्ट डिटेक्शन ऑफ मटीरियल मिस स्टेटमेंट थ्रू द सबस्टैंड टेस्टिंग सो क्लोज आंसर इज बेसिकली सी ओके सो हाउ टू हाउ टू बेसिकली आंसर ओके सो कंप्लायंस टेस्टिंग इज अ टेस्ट ऑफ कंट्रोल एंड सबस्टेंस टेस्टिंग इज टेस्ट ऑफ डिटेल सो इफ आई से ऑपरेटिंग इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ अ कंट्रोल इन प्रिवेंटिंग एग्जाम्पल प्रेजेंस एंड एबसेंस ऑफ चेंज मैनेजमेंट प्रोसीजर एंड दैट वैलिडेट विद अ क्विक वॉक थ्रू इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ कंप्लायंस टेस्टिंग बट मटीरियल वीकनेस एट द एसेशन लेवल इज बेसिकली कॉल्ड एज अ सबस्टेंस टेस्टिंग कंप्लाय विद मैनेजमेंट पॉलिसी प्रोसीजर एग्जाम्पल लाइक every system should be protected with eight character password we try to create eight character username password in the system if able to create then it's okay if you, if it if i'm creating less than eight character username password so my expectation is system should not create that it should give error so that is called as a compliance testing but checking the integrity of actual processing is part of a substantive test any question has a keyword called existence and effectiveness of a defined process like absence and presence of chain management procedure that is called compliance test but is it complete is it accurate it producing a same result that is basically called as a substantive test user access right programs program change control logs audits are part of compliance test but performance of com- complex calculation okay sample of transactions is basically part of the a uh, substantive test as i said first we start with the compliance test and then we basically move to substantive test that is basically the ideal procedure we have let's take example uh, i want so there is a firewall is there i am doing an audit of the firewall okay i want to check the effectiveness of firewall rule so that is called verification of firewall setting whether it is working effectively or not so that is basically compliance testing okay that is a part of a compliance testing review of the company policies absence and presence of control okay so that is basically part of a compliance testing now i will show you one example where compliance and substantive testing used together so team i will give you a best example like as a part of a change management process okay so imagine a company okay imagine a company that develop a piece of software okay and this software need to be comply with various financial regulation so let's say example gdpr okay so as a part of a compliance test okay as a part of a compliance set or as a part of a change management process a new change to the software must go through a compliance test and this involve checking a new feature or modification to ensure they meet the relevant financial regulation or gdpr for instance if the software is intended for use in a european market it may it need to be test against the gdpr requirement so this is the software it need to be test as per the gdpr so that is basically called as a compliance test just checking to make sure the software is comply with the legal regulatory or not and substantive test okay substantive test is basically all about so any change or after change have been implemented and verified for compliance the auditor will basically conduct the substantive test to validate the financial transaction impacted by this change for example if new billing system has been introduced the auditor might verify the sample of invoice to confirm the system record and process transaction correctly for the software so when integrate into change and process substantive test add a layer of assurance by validating the change have been made been accurately captured in the financial records and reports and it ensure not only the changes comply with the regulation and internal control but also correctly reflect in the actual financial data and ledger so by using this test you can able to validate the process okay so let's move to the next coffee shot thank you In conducting a comprehensive review of the account payable system through data analytics software all transaction records what should the auditor use to prioritize to ensure the integrity of this analysis i repeat again in conducting a comprehensive review of account payable system through data analytics across all the transaction record what should an is auditor prioritize to ensure integrity of analysis so here the question has a problem statement i want to make sure the integrity whatever i am doing analysis it should have a integrity option a ensure exclusion of business owner details from the data set but that is required okay option b guarantee data extraction directly from the source system that is also true because if i'm extracting from direct that give more trustworthiness securing data accessibility with the designated time frame that's more from a confidentiality point of view and d is verifying the recent updates of data analytics software that is again a talking about the updates so answer is basically b see when we talking about audit if you obtain the data directly from the target system that is a first principle rule for 
authenticity and second is who produce that who provide that independency that is the second most important thing we need to consider is it clear so that's where the answer is basically b for beta so this is all from my side team uh, in this particular coffee and do let me know how do you find this coffee and shall i make more coffees on the similar cesar topic in the comment box which motivate me to make more videos and if you're not subscribed to the channel do subscribe because i don't want you to miss the important part of the video or important content of cesar okay stay tuned and without you i'm nothing remember that so it is my subscribers only who are my gladiators who who basically play a important role in my journey so good day bye take care